Publishing research in medical school can feel impossible when you're already swamped with classes, exams, and your clinical rotations, but it is an absolute must for you to be a competitive applicant for residency. In this video, I'm going to share with you five strategies I used to publish 18 papers by the time I applied for residency. If you're new here, my name is J.R. Smith and I'm an orthopedic surgery resident at the Mayo Clinic. So the average number of research publications that medical students graduate with is between four and five papers. So if you can get to double digits, that is going to be a game changer for your candidacy for a residency. And this can be pretty challenging because honestly, research takes a very, very long time. I remember starting projects and not finishing them for multiple years in some cases. Now, before graduating medical school, I had five years of research experience. I ended up taking a research year actually before starting medical school, where I started about eight projects. And then during medical school, during those four years, then I started and finished another 10 projects for that total 18 projects before submitting my applications for residency. And doing this amount of research not only helped incredibly with my application to residency, but it also helped me grow my network and it helped me learn a lot about the specialty that I'm currently a resident in. One of the most important strategies for students looking to publish a ton of research is to find mentors who are doing just that. You will come across a ton of mentors in your journey, but when it comes to research, stick with those who are constantly publishing multiple papers every year. And the best way to find those people are to first identify the field that you're interested in and then find a list of faculty at your institution within that field and search them up on PubMed, which is just an archive of the scientific literature. Then choose to reach out to the person who is publishing 20 papers per year rather than the one who publishes two. So when I started medical school, I always knew that I wanted to go into orthopedic surgery and I even knew that I was very interested in sports medicine. And this was actually what I did research in even before starting medical school during my research year. And when I started, I took the same approach that we just described, and I found someone who was actually publishing 30 to 40 papers every year consistently. And I reached out to this person, and not only did he have multiple projects for me to get involved in, but a lot of them actually didn't require that much work because he had systems in place where there were multiple people helping on various projects. And like the quote says, many hands make light work. For some of those projects, I didn't actually end up doing too much, but I was still able to contribute to the project and get my name on the paper. And of course, there would be some projects where I would be very involved and wanted to be first author and so would help from idea generation all the way to publication. But there would be others where I just would contribute to getting a project to the finish line. And when you identify mentors who are very productive, they have systems in place where you can do both first author, very involved work, to just helping projects get across the finish line. And when you are trying to publish a ton of work, you need to be able to have a healthy balance of both. Tip number two is when you do start that project, find a similar paper to help structure your writing. Don't reinvent the wheel here. Look for similar projects that are already published, which will give you a good framework for how you write your introduction, method, results, and discussion sections. I remember when I started my first research project and I was absolutely terrified. And all I had to do was just write the introduction of this paper, but this scientific research was very different than the book reports or essays that I was writing in college. And I felt that if I absolutely submitted a garbage first draft, that would probably be the last research opportunity that I had with my mentor. But thankfully I was able to find previous papers written by my mentor and see exactly how he preferred to structure his introduction section. And again, all of this is easily accessible on PubMed. This will save you tons of time and prevent you from turning in a draft that gets you kicked off the paper. Tip number three is to start one project at a time, but have multiple projects going at the same time. And this kind of sounds confusing, but let me explain. Research has tons of lulls in the process. There are times when you are starting a process and doing idea generation and meeting with your research team and drafting up concepts. There are other times where you're chart reviewing patients. And then there are times when you're actually putting the pen to the paper or the keyboard to the computer and you're actually writing the paper. And then after that, you have to submit your draft to your mentors and then you wait for their feedback. And after you incorporate their edits and recommendations and you finalize your draft, then you submit it to a journal. And again, you wait for their feedback. And oftentimes after you submit to a journal, there's a back and forth where you submit, they give you feedback, you use their feedback, you submit again, and sometimes they change their feedback, they send it back and you go back and forth and back and forth. And again, this is why research papers can sometimes take multiple years to finish. And during this time, there are going to be very frequent periods where you aren't doing anything active with this project. And the students who are not able to publish as prolifically and productively as their colleagues 
are the ones who only will do one project until it is published and then only after a project is published then they start the other one. Now, if you take that approach, then you may end up graduating medical school with maybe one or two projects. So instead, get started on a project and when you reach that period where you're not actively doing anything on that project, then ask your mentor if there's anything else that you can help with and they'll oftentimes give you another project. And do that same thing over and over again so that you're always having something that you're working on. This is how students are really able to get to the double digits in terms of the number of publications they have by the time they graduate medical school. But do not start multiple projects at the same time because this is how students get swamped and overwhelmed and unfortunately struggle in their other medical school responsibilities like their grades and their clerkships. And the last thing that you want to do is start a project and not get your part of the project back to the team in a timely manner because that's another way to get kicked off the team. The next tip is to have an organized workspace. Staying organized is key when managing multiple projects. You need a central workspace where you can track deadlines, take notes from research meetings, and draft parts of your paper. And this actually brings me to the kind sponsor of today's video, Taskade. Taskade is an AI resource that is designed to help you 10X your productivity. It helps manage tasks, create notes, and even proofreads your papers. One of the most stressful parts of doing research in medical school is sending that first draft out to the research team. But Taskade can ensure that your first draft is a work of art. And that is how you'll have your research mentors continuing to ask if you can help with more projects. Organization is key with research, but to really get to 10 plus papers in medical school, you need to spend less time organizing and more time doing and that is what Taskade can help you do. You can easily switch between projects you're working on and even access everything from anywhere. Not only is there a desktop app, but there's a tablet and mobile app as well. We live in a day and age where if used appropriately, AI can be an incredible resource. And I couldn't think of a better use than helping you create a workspace for your research. And honestly, just for all of medical school. Check out Taskade for free using the link in the description below get started on your AI driven workspace and watch not only your research productivity, but all aspects of your productivity soar. Thanks so much Taskade for sponsoring this video. Now the final tip that let me be super productive is time blocking weekly for research. It can be very easy to fall behind in your research and I was actually a victim of experiencing what it's like to have deadlines creeping up on you and having to spend all hours of the night, the day before having to go in for a rotation up doing research trying to catch up and it is a miserable experience and after experiencing how bad that was not only for my research productivity but also for my ability to do well in my other medical school responsibilities i ultimately came to the conclusion that chipping away a little bit on a regular basis was the way to go and after i did that the productivity went through the roof and the way that i did this was on a weekly basis, I dedicated at least one to two hours a week on a research. And this was usually on the weekends where I would spend the morning for an hour or two before the day started. After I studied for a little bit, just add an extra hour or two dedicated to research that would be scheduled in because like I'd say all the time, things that are not on the calendar do not happen. So I would schedule in one to two hours every week, usually on the weekend where it would just be dedicated to research. And a lot of times, in medical school, you're doing things like chart reviews, which can seem extremely overwhelming. But if you just put an end time on that and you know that you are only going to your computer for one to two hours, depending on how long you schedule it, then when you get that time, you have the opportunity to say, I'm done for the day. And you can turn your computer off comfortably knowing that you have made progress on your research projects. And sometimes, after one to two hours on a paper, I don't feel like I actually did too much because sometimes papers need a lot of work. But I've noticed that doing that on a weekly basis not only allowed me to keep putting one foot in front of the other on papers, continuing to maintain my progress with my research, but it minimized the stress that I had while doing it. And to get to those numbers of 10 plus publications, some people do that in a very stressed induced environment. But if you do things where you're chipping away slowly over time by just scheduling one to two hours per week on research, you'll find that you're able to get so much done while having very, very little stress along the way. So to summarize, find productive mentors, use similar papers to structure your writing, get involved in multiple projects during the lulls in other projects, utilize AI to stay organized with resources like Taskade, and schedule in time on a weekly basis to chip away at the research so you're constantly moving forward without feeling crushed. If you like this video, you may also like this one where I explain how I went from an average medical student to one at the top of my class. 
as always, keep evolving and I'll see you guys in the next one.